All right, guys, Club Sports Radio. So LeVar Arrington is picking the Baltimore Ravens and talking about, uh, what is it, Ray Lewis uh, walking or running into the wind? I mean, come on. So, guys, Clutch Sports Radio, Ravens, he, I think LeVar, uh, LeVar really loves Ray. You know, they're really good friends. Um, I think that they're playing, the Ravens are playing a really emotional game, but we don't know what's going to happen. I just don't know if it's going to be enough, uh, you know, if, if it's going to be one of those things that these guys are going to get it done over and over again. That's going to be three games in a row that they're going to have to go in there and do it against, uh, again, Peyton Manning, against... Tom Brady, and now you have to do it against Kaepernick, which is not, again, it's not one of those Peyton Manning and, and Tom Brady kind of names, but still, a phenomenal, a great team that's on a roll right now and has great offensive power. So, we'll see. What do you guys think? Hey, don't forget about your boy Andrew Luck, first round. Andrew Luck, yes. Ah. Huh. Well, what do you mean? Well, what? I mean, that was more of a, of a joke, really. Oh. I don't think he's nearly <laughs> close to that level yet. But, I mean, that's still a win and a playoff win. So that's uh, definitely something that is, is hard to come by and something that Joe Flacco's actually had a pretty good record on his playoff victories. Yeah, uh, you guys see it. We have some, some folks in the chat box, Ravens. I see some 49ers. I see all kinds of people, huh? Ravens, 49ers. What else? 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 Come on, people. Get your picks. Who do you have winning? Get them in the chat box. I want to see. So Ravens and 49ers. Um, again, we're going to talk a little bit later. Let, let's talk about something that I saw come up in the news today, actually. The, the Redskins raising their ticket prices. What do you guys oh think about God. that? Now, now, and here's the thing. After a phenomenal season, the Redskins are the NFC East champions, okay? <laughs> Robert Griffin III, yes, the, he went down, but franchise quarterback, we assume that this guy's going to happen. Great season. Now, does that mean that now you have to make money off of it? Apparently, so guys, Daniel, Daniel Snyder, is he ever going to change? No, he's a businessman, but does this really suck? Uh, and do you think that people are... Some people don't even care. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it sucks because he's taking advantage of the success, but people are all about the team that they're not going to care and they're going to pay. That's a sad thing that, I mean, people will pay, but it gets to a point where people literally cannot afford it. You know, it's it's sad. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say and that, I mean, even before my time, I mean, we grew up, my dad had season tickets for, like, I don't know, like 25 years or something. I mean, it got to the point where, I mean, it it's so expensive even to go to one game that the the crowd has kind of changed some because it it i mean if you don't make a certain amount of money i mean paying it's hard to find a ticket for standing room less than a hundred bucks now so to raise those i mean it's really unfortunate that and let's start there lauren now that there's even standing thing uh you know ticket standing only tickets now at FedEx Field like there is a, at Dallas. I mean, when when we heard the Cowboys and Jerry Jones doing that, first thing that comes to mind, dude is trying to make money. And, yeah. it's, I mean, it's like that in every part of this organization. That's just crazy. Yeah, and I actually think that the Redskins got FedEx Field and kind of built that, that new stadium on kind of the onset when the rest of the NFL was just about to start building these huge luxury stadiums. I think it, you know, now yeah. Dallas has just kind of blown it out of the water with Jerry World, and it seems like Dan Snyder's trying to do little things because he know, well, I know he can't really get a new stadium right now. FedEx Field is actually not that old, even though I did see something that it, it slipped into like the the bottom third of, of oldest stadiums in the league. I think recently, so oh, actually, really? because like you said, so many new yeah, stadiums so many, have been so many, built. Yeah, exactly. So I think Dan Snyder's trying to do some things with the standing room, some different things here and there to kind of enrich that game day experience to compete with Jerry Jones because I think really he knows that FedEx Field is not that great of a venue for an NFL game, at least in my opinion. Yeah, um, something's got to, guys, behind me, do you guys see that, that, that bag? That's what I was looking at. What does it say, Lauren? Can you read it? Huh. Hate the owner, love the team. You do you remember when 106.7 The Fan was doing that? It, because... Uh, Outrage and, and fans were wearing these bags. They're like a brown paper bag. Hate the owner, not the team. I, I, to the game. I saw people get get escorted out by you know Dan Snyder's little little crew exactly. for you know wearing shirts that said you know Snyder sucks. All money signs is the S's of course. Um, you know he banned signs that well this was like what two two years ago um, because people were had so many signs that were all negative things about him and it's kind of quieted down now and I feel like. 
with the positive changes that have been made in the organization, he's starting to be seen a little bit more of a positive light. But with this, I mean, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, our tickets are already one of the highest in the priced in the NFL, I think. Right, and actually, I think this, you can contribute this, I think, just solely to RG3. I mean, the past couple of years, uh, you saw a season ticket list of 25 years plus wait list shrink down. They were calling people and people were saying, you know, no thanks after they had been on that for years and years. Yeah. And now this ticket jump, I mean, we're getting to the point where a price of a ticket is going to be close to a price of a TV that you might be able to watch, you know, a flat screen and sit there on Sunday right in front of it in the warm comfort of, comfort of your own house. I mean, I think this is getting to be a little ridiculous. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration. Well, still, not really. I mean, for the Dallas game, you know, seats are going for, if you want to sit in the lower level, anywhere near the 50-yard line, 1000 bucks a pop. Yeah, so I see we got some people in the chat box saying boycott, boycott the games, you know. It's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. So how many in, of you in the chat box are going to actually boycott it, though? That It's easy to say, but do you really... I mean, come on, think about it. Now you actually have a product that you don't, you can't miss. I mean, Robert Griffin III, who at, the, at this point, everybody uh, wants to at some point see him play live, right? I mean, as phenomenal as he is, you got to see him play live. If you're a fan, you probably have that jersey, that number 10 jersey, and you want to see the guy live. How, why wouldn't you? So really, boycotting, uh, uh, talk is cheap, right? Are you going to back it up? Does that mean by boycotting, you're not going to see Robert Griffin III? You're a dude. So, guys, really, are you going to boycott it? Are you willing to to risk that? Or not to risk it, but to... to sacrifice. Uh, yeah, to sacrifice not seeing Robert Griffin III, that special guy? Well, I guess they might be able to raise the ticket prices in the meantime. I guess hopefully we're seeing RG3 a little sooner rather than later. But, I mean, in my opinion, if you think about it, and if you believe in any way that the fans can actually affect the game and have a home field advantage... Um, which I think we definitely felt coming down the stretch last year. Yeah. I, I, I think you're still probably going to go out and support the team and see what you can do as fans. I know that uh, you know Seattle had a great fan base. There's, I mean, there's some great fan bases around the NFL, and I think you know the Redskins are right up there. I think their fans are a little bit above you know boycotting and actually not going to the games themselves. All right, so well, I don't know. So overall, does this does this make you guys mad? Yes or no? What do you think? Yeah, it definitely makes me mad because I'm gonna pay it. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm I'm still gonna go to the games, you know. And I think the majority of people that when it's the experience. I mean, besides seeing a specific player like that, I mean, just you know, being out there with Redskins Nation, it's um, you know, people be kind of becomes another family, and I think people will pay it, and he knows that. So you know, if if the people that have been going the last couple years can't afford to go anymore there's going to be someone else that's willing to pay it that will go companies are going to start you know there's going to be a lot of bandwagon fans uh, a lot of companies that will start buying tickets because it's you know since they're a hot item you know they can take their clients they can expense it it's it's not going to affect the crowd at all so it, we got we got actually a lot of activity in the chat box we got actually it doesn't appear that the Redskins are even in the top five of the most expensive tickets so I'm sure they've got to be close or at least heading that wow. way. Look at, guys, uh, so thank you, Brother Brady. Jets, Brady put Jets $117.94 wow. for a ticket Man, for the there. New York Jets. And how bad of a product yeah. are the New York Jets? You're going to see lack of football. You're not going to see football over there. You know, that's really bad. The Bears, uh, you know, not bad. Uh, look, $110, $111, Giants, Cowboys, $110. we are 109 I believe, right? I think for what the, the yeah we 109 plus taxes <laughs> so we're up there but not 107 what is it 17 jets come on guys sanchez really 118 dollars plus taxes 120 something plus oh my gosh ta uh, parking i don't know how parking is in other stadiums but if it's a, mm -hmm. like it is at fedex that's no joke huh you're you're definitely talking of uh, talking about spending a couple hundred dollars to attend an NFL game for an NFL experience. Is that worth it? And going back to it, now people have HD TVs. There's uh, the NFL Network, there's a Red Zone Channel, there's 3D TVs. Well, you can't get a game 
three in three D. But what I'm saying is eventually, at, well. eventually. But right now, you you're still at the comfort of your home, which is what I do when I hook up my Mac and I have my iPad for fantasy. I have all my cool, fun gadgets, and I get to sit on my couch and not go. So I mean, what's worth it, right? Is is it what's better? Is what I'm saying. Yeah, especially for the fantasy gurus out there. I know a lot of people in mean, fantasy football is huge now. I mean, I got plenty of buddies that they're huge fans for their respective teams, and they'd rather watch the Red Zone channel and just see when their team scores than actually watch the game. And That's why and I don't I, like fantasy. It's taken away from... I can even say that I've fallen victim to this in, in previous years. Um, I've watched every minute of the Redskins game this previous year. So you can say some things about that. But I still think that, with that said, fantasy taking off, people wanting to watch every game, see all the live action, as opposed to just paying hundreds of dollars and going to see one game, uh, that, you know, that can get to be kind of a tough decision. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're just like you're saying, Coleman, Go imagine putting a family in there. I don't even know what that's like. Oh like, God. taking a family to a game, that's no joke. I couldn't even imagine that, you know what I mean? It's a give and take. It's, do you, you know, you definitely do go into all the games. You miss a lot in terms of, you don't have the commentators, you know, reiterating everything that's happening. Depending where you're sitting, you can't see plays develop as well. Um, you know, they play select replays depending on which way they're going. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the, the game watching experience, but... I mean, like I had said, back to being involved in the, the whole atmosphere and, you know, I could go to a game by myself and feel like I was sitting around a hundred people I knew, you know, everyone just automatically becomes your friend and your, your family member whether you met them or not. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, once you've experienced that, I mean, some people, you know, maybe that's not important to them, but that's something that, that I really love about going to the games. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, it, it's just crazy. Again, I'm a, I'm a crazy fan, so I think I'm gonna pay it when it comes down to it. I'm gonna probably pay the, the, the extra money in the Redskins because, again, these guys, guys, we're talking about going into the playoffs, losing first round, but nevertheless, these guys had that seven game streak. It was phenomenal if you were a fan, and if you were a fan and going to that stadium, it was just ridiculous. So let's go ahead and take a break. We're joined by our next guest, and that is Washington Redskins, my guy. Uh, long snapper, and that is Nick Sunberg. You can also catch him sportsevolutionradio.com. It's not active right now, but, but my man, I miss it. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. How you guys doing? Oh man, we're doing doing well here, having a good time on Clutch Sports Radio. So thanks again. I don't want to take too much of your time, but thanks again for uh, joining here in the off season. So Nick, let's get started. Right now, I saw you tweet last night, and uh, I was at the gym. Pumping it up, uh, getting huge. <clears throat> Watch yourself. Uh, arm wrestling when I see you. Uh, been eating chicken wings too. Um, anyways, <laughs> and dude, I saw you tweet and it, saying that you know Danny Smith, one of the best coaches. And I know you and I doing the show. Uh, I definitely got that. That you know, not just yourself, Lorenzo Alexander, all these guys over the past several seasons. This isn't any, anything new in terms of guys rallying around this coach. And saying how great of a coach he is, and and really you've seen the results. The Washington Redskins special teams unit has been phenomenal. It's produced. It's it's really has produced results. So and now Danny Smith is getting out of here, going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You've been here for uh, several seasons. That's all you've known as for him as a coach. What are your feelings? What do you think of him going away? All right, and I mean, but overall, do you what kind of a gap or what kind of a hit does a team take uh, when when they've built this just chemistry? I mean, obviously, I've learned uh, special teams chemistry not only between yourself, the the kicker and uh, the punter, but also obviously the coach. I mean, it's just chemistry all around. You guys know each other.